What's up, Pornhub? I mean, what's up, GTA community? I mean, YouTube. My name is Dr. GTA. This is my channel. Um, basically, today I'm going to be coming to you with this video on specifications regarding the hardware requirements for GTA 5 on PC. This video is made for people who need to build a brand new PC, play GTA 5 on a PC with new hardware that's up to date, that's going to run GTA 5 fully at 1920 by 1080p on PC and with mods. All right, so basically I'm going to first start off with saying you're going to need at least 1500 bucks and it's going to be running on a i5-4670K processor at 3.4 gigahertz with a Noctua DH14 fan. It's air cooled. The reason I went with this fan is because it's the best bang for your buck for the price value and it's air cooled. You know, keep your system nice and cool with a mild overclock. GTA 5 will be running probably on four cores, like every typical game that runs on PC it runs a maximum of four treads or four cores. And it will be running on that four core uh, processor. And because we've seen GTA 4 run at really low frames per second with standard technology. I've noticed that GTA 4 requires a lot of high overclocks in order to maintain fr frames per second and response times from real time from what you see on the screen and such, as well as it goes with the GPU. But we'll get into the GPU in a second. First off, we're probably going to have a little tutorial. I'm going to link it below on how to overclock your 4670K with the Noctua D H14 fan. We'll link that below, a video that'll help you overclock it. You wanna to try to get at least 4.2 to 4.5 gigahertz out of this processor because that's gonna provide you maximum overclockability and maximum frames per second at 1920 by 1080p. And keep in mind that just use those tutorials and you will be able to overclock the PC. All right, for the motherboard to power this CPU and GPU and run all this power through it and to overclock it, we went with the MSI motherboard. We went with a full ATX Z87 G45 MSI motherboard, which is gonna provide SLI benefits as well as overclockability and dependability, and it will run all this high power input through it. Has great reviews. I've seen YouTube videos, which I'll link below, which overclocked the CPU with, and it's overclocked to 4.5 hertz on air. Check that out. Now we're gonna move on to the GPU. The GPU is going to be the MSI Twin Frozer model. The reason I picked this is because it's slightly cooler and slightly quieter than the GTX model, and you can overclock it. So if you're needing higher frame rates, it's basically like a 680 with four gigs, but it's a 770. So I went with 770 because it's newer hardware. I'm going off of what we have out right now, which is the 770, and that's the best bang for your buck. Also, four gigs of RAM for frame buffer, so you can hit those maximum resolutions. And to keep up with those maximum resolutions, you have to download MSI Afterburner software. I'll link that in the, in the description below. And you run that, overclock the voltage, and overclock the GPU, and you can get some better frames per second and keep your high resolutions. Storage. We went with an SSD because you can actually see good textures and quality textures run in your game without actually having the problem of hard drive bottlenecks. We went with a standard SSD with 256 gigabytes, a Samsung 840 Pro Series SSD, and that's gonna be the, the SSD we're gonna use. There are faster ones, but you're wondering why. Why didn't I go with a faster one? Because this one is the best, I would say, bang for your buck as well. Plus, it's actually going to help with the IOPS. It has more IOPS than the other ones that are faster, so you're going to have a lot of life with this, so thank me later. Apparently they said the GTA 5 is gonna be on PC on 20 gigs instead of eight namely on the Xbox another thing this is probably gonna last you maybe two three years if you play every day I've played mine for two to three years I have one on my system up there too probably two or three years you'll be able to run this without it crashing so thank me later for the IOPS for the power supply unit we went with a Corsair because it's guaranteed Corsair is a really reliable company it's a 750 watt there was a 650 watt cheaper but it's actually the same price for the 750, so I was like, why not go with the 750 the case? The case is very cheap. I went with a Thermaltake Commander case. I picked a model that would keep us under 1500 bucks, but you can pick whichever you want. I like this model because it's breathable, it still looks kind of vicious, and it kind of has that Star Trooper look to it. Plus it's black, you can't go wrong with that. And I'm not sure, but I think I saw a little glass panel and you can look through it, so. It's always good and it's 30 bucks and it actually has a melon rebate on there too so next up we um, are going with windows 7 operating systems namely because windows 8 we're not sure it's gonna if it's gonna run correctly the monitor we went with the acer 24 inch 60 hertz monitor um, it's standard and it's optimum enough to run graphics 1920 by 1080 fully has a backlit display has speakers on it which you're gonna love because you're gonna have your headset on you're gonna have you know your controller you're gonna commun communicate with people and you're gonna have your speakers playing everything else out of it so that's that's awesome. It's an awesome benefit to have if you don't want to buy the subwoofer system, which the speaker system, which I'm, it's the best system you can get for 30 bucks. It's amazing for a computer. Um, but if you don't, you can go with this monitor. This monitor has speakers in it. 
and you won't regret it because it's in set speakers. Plus it runs at 60 hertz and it's a standard, it's 24 inches which is pretty big too. There's a couple other things I want to go over. The speaker system which is the last thing. This speaker system is very, um, very unique. I didn't expect to find something this good for the deal. We went with the Cyber Acoustics 390 10 watt 2.1 speaker system. Um, it's 10 watt subwoofer, 2.1 audio which means it's stereo but with an, an additional sub. So you're getting that amazing tweeters and sound from above and you're getting that deep bass below. 30 bucks, 35 bucks. Who knew that was possible? And I, I saw amazing reviews on all this stuff, including the hardware, GPU, AMD, all that stuff. Next up, we have peripherals. We're gonna go over this keyboard. The CM Devastator Gaming Bundle, it's only 28 bucks. And it comes with a mouse, it's a gaming mouse and a gaming keyboard. What else could you want, you know? That's gonna run everything. So like that's 30 bucks instead of paying 50 for two or getting some really high-end tech. And I know there's better mouses and they say there's more precision with certain mouses, but I don't really see it. I play with a wireless mouse. We're actually gonna go with a controller. I wasn't gonna say buy one, but I would say if you're gonna be playing GTA, you're gonna wanna play online and you're not gonna wanna use a keyboard. You're gonna wanna use a controller. So 360 controller for Windows. Um, we do want the cord controller because I know you can buy a wireless one if you want, but the cord controller is more reliable. You can play it longer and you won't have any problems with the battery. I'm gonna switch it out and you can play nonstop. No problems. And who else besides me is gonna be online playing nonstop? I'm gonna be online playing nonstop. Saved you a couple bucks too, so keep in mind on that. The RAM, we went for 8 gig configuration on the RAM. It's going to be 8 gigs of DDR3 memory running at 1333 megahertz. You can overclock this RAM to 2100 or 1900 whenever you overclock your CPU, so don't worry about that. But we went with 8 gigs because 8 gigs is primo for having optimum configuration for GTA 4. It's obviously probably going to be optimum for GTA 5 and it probably might run better. If your hardware you're running right now can run GTA 4 at 1920 by 1080 without any chops or frame rates and it runs it at 50 frames per second, that's a good CPU, it's a good hardware configuration. That's gonna run GTA 5 better than it will than it runs GTA 4. So don't worry about buying anything upgrading. I would just wait to see what happens because we're gonna actually be releasing the hardware requirements in the next few weeks, so stay tuned for that. We actually went with a different type of thermal paste, Arctic Silver 5 Thermal Compound. This is the best thermal compound you can buy for a CPU, and this is gonna be the best one you could use for your CPU. So we're gonna show you how to apply that. If you don't know how to apply a thermal paste, I'll link a video. You're gonna use that in configuration with your new Noctua DH14 fan and your CPU. That's gonna drop you probably five to 10 degrees just on that. Plus you're gonna be overclocking, so why not save it? And all this comes out to around $1,500. And this is the best configuration that you can get for GTA 5 before it even comes out that'll guaranteed probably run GTA 5 at 1920 by 1080 p and play mods and play online and basically play GTA 5 for the next two years and it'll still be up to date. All the hardware is currently up to date and specifically built only for GTA 5. So keep in mind if you're trying to play other games, it might not be for you, but this is specifically for GTA 5 and playing online at 1920 by 1080 p getting ghost frames per second with mods. And if you also apply the rebates, it's going to bring you down to about $1,400. So you're going to drop 100 bucks just in rebates if you buy all these parts in the list. If you need help you configure it, I'll link everything in the description or I'll put it in the comments if you're specific. Stay tuned here for more GTA 5 PC hardware content and GTA 5 mods as time develops and as time goes by. And thanks for watching. Yeah, I think that's it. We're done here. Okay, no scratch time.